three, two, one. What up? It is the Dennis and Andy show Monday interview edition. We are here. We are live in your living room or your office or on your tablet, or maybe you're enjoying us laying in bed. Maybe. Well, welcome to the interview edition. Glad everybody could make it. We had an awesome weekend. We had a microcon at the brewery. We had beer. We had great food trucks. And most we, importantly of all, we had comic books. Lot we ate comic books. We ate at the garbage truck or whatever yes. it's called. Literally the garbage truck. That was yeah. correct. It was some awesome food. I got my pizza, pizza wraps or pizza logs. That's it. Yep. And you and got I had the Philly, Philly logs. Steak logs. Woo! It was good stuff. We had some micro brews. Dennis got his dark, crappy beer, and I got the nice ale, blonde, which is always better. Yes, the light beer that barely—it's just water with a little, a little stuff in it. Yeah, my glass was bigger. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, look at that! I was hoping for a no, better retort than no, that. You weren't going to pull it out of me. Well, Andy, you know. Since it's Monday and it's an interview edition, I bet we got somebody that we can bring on the show. We do. Waiting in the wings, bringing on is my buddy that I've known for freaking 30, technically 31 years. Oh, my God. It's Bart Sears. It's 31. He's frozen. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. What are you talking about? What are you doing? All right. I just saw something I didn't know existed. What's that? A painting of the Black Ruins of Aramore, the story we wrote for uh, Heavy Metals Wonderworks. Wonderworks. A painting? A painting of the... Who did it? I don't know. Michelle just popped it in over the corner of the thing. Are they actually using it for something? It's on a cover, I guess. It's covered Heavy Metal. Really? Wow. Uh, wow. Hold on, I'm on a full screen. Hold yeah, on for a second. Full screen it up. It. Huh. That's interesting. Black Ruins of Aramore. It what was issue the, first, uh, the first Wonderworks story they did. What issue number is that wrote? supposed to be? I don't know. Number three oh uh, six. Oh, I would have liked to they actually were doing that. Oh, there you go. Well, that's if they turn into a story, I'll be a little annoyed, but I guess I'll find out. I was gonna say <laughs> that's how you find out. Lots of people six. saying, Hey, oh, look, we've got another one in the room. <laughs> Donald says, Go, box. You betcha. So, oh boy, duh. Wait, let me look. I'm, there's got to be a go pack. Oh, no, there's not. Oh, well. There, there is as many go pack goes as there is go cowboys or how about them cowboys? Oh no, well, those you are all heard that since the nineties. Oh, you bastard! <laughs> Not when so, it mattered anyway. That's so. Oh god damn it! That's so hurtful. <laughs> Word, yeah. Words hurt. Words hurt. They sting yep. just a little. Sticks and stones do break my bones. Look, and of course, Michael chimes in with this garbage. <laughs> oh, the G men. God, yeah, damn they suck too. So I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> well, they suck too. Yeah, we we were at the convention. So uh, um, anybody local, hopefully you made it to this fantastic convention. And as we were going through the boxes, you know, I got a lot of some gold key Star Trek, and I'll do a video later on that. But huh, guess what I found? Ooh, huh. beautiful, right? Yeah. Beautiful, fun comic book. How much was that, Dennis? How much is it? How much did you pay for it? 
Um, cover price is 75 cent. <laughs> And you paid. I want my two dollars because that's what it. That's what it was. It was yeah. It was a two dollar comic book. Yeah. It's show. Oh, real the, quick. Signed. Uh, we were gone at three, weren't we? We we left at three o'clock. Yeah, we uh, left like right around three. Yeah, Susie. So. Uh, Susie came and she ate at the garbage truck while we were finishing up. But we had walked around. We picked up all of our books and we we kind of skedaddled at uh, at three. A lot, yeah, lot of stuff going there? on. We look for you. We look what was for that, Bart? Did you guys have a table there? No, no, no. We were just walking around. So it was a scaled down version, I guess. This is the first time either one of us has, have went. They've done it for three years. It's always at this brewery. But I guess the tables are usually set up inside the brewery. But with the COVID, they were all outside. So they had about half the amount of vendors as usual. But it was still fun. I picked up some fun stuff. I got the, I think the best thing I got was Submariner number eight, where he fights the thing. Remember that cover with Busema did, where it's awesome. Oh yeah. So I got a nice copy of that. So yeah, it was, it was good really times. Nice. Yeah, everything was outdoors. It was a perfect day. Seventy-two to seventy-five degrees. Just a perfect day to be out getting comics. That's right. So let's uh, let's dive in. Uh, we always ask out of the gate, Bart, if you can remember, and I know your memory. What was the first comic book you ever bought? I will never remember that. <laughs> Come I on, I thought I, I. I think I know the There's answer. No way I can remember that. Didn't There's you? No way. Didn't you have I, me? Was I was getting when I was three years old. We would go in the store, and Brett was reading them, so I would pick out ones and and get those and read them, and then. I remember the one that made me want to draw comics. All right, well, fine. That's uh, fine. That's the uh, it was an eighty size, eighty page super giant, spectacular like detective. God dang, what was the number? It's that the, Neil Adams drew the Batman Wolf, uh, werewolf story in. Yep, it had Batman. That's the one that I thought was one of the first ones. But yeah, yeah that's the. Oh no, that's right. You did say that was one that made you want to draw. Yeah, Dennis, you know the one we're talking about. I mean, yeah, Bat Batman's on the cover, and it's a smaller image. It's a it's an eighty page giant, and the werewolves in the background jumping towards him. Yep. So I can't remember that, the number. That's a very good one, but that's that's just a general question we always like to ask. But that's, so that's the that's one. Did you get that? Real meaning. What when you got that? I don't think I know this. I don't think I've ever asked you this. Did you get that when it came out? Yeah. Oh, really? So you got yep. that off the stands, huh? Yeah, and I took tracing paper and started tracing Neil's stuff out of there. Oh, cool. I had no idea how to, you know, how to really do that. I don't remember right. what it was. I'm trying to think. That that had to be, god damn, now I'm trying to remember what year that book was. Because I actually, I think I bought a copy. I think I was 10. Because that's when I remember. So 73, I was going to say it was, I was going to say it's probably early 70s. Yeah. So that sounds about right. That sounds about right. So did you did you keep collecting after that? I was never per se a collector and we didn't have a shop I'd go like if I would go to the you know the spinner rack wherever I would go. You know, I never really right. knew when they came out. You know, nobody at the right. store ever could answer any questions about comics. So whatever they had when I went in, so I would, you know, I don't know, fall in love with some comic and then you know miss two issues somehow and then you know find so there were all kinds of gaps right so, oh here it is you found Batman the book 55 are you looking at it on the screen no that's not the that's not the right one. Oh, well if you find it and you share your screen i can share it and show it but you don't have to well i've got two what? screens so that's kind of weird Batman number 255. Well, if you hit at the bottom of the StreamYard thing, there's the thing that says share. If you hit share, it'll let you pick the screen you want to share, and then I can pull it up. If you 74. Want. All right, I'll do that. 74. And then we can show everybody the one you're talking about. Share screen. You should have it, because I remember hunting it down for you at a show. Okay, can you see those? Oh, uh, wait. Screen two. Yeah. Share. Yeah, there we go. 
There it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Move the good both. one. Yeah. Oh. If only they would have uh, got rid of those small panels on the side. I still love <laughs> that, man. Oh, yeah. A, no, that's just cool. I did a cover for Darren for um, one of his books where, you know, the thing was to have the small panel there. Oh, you can stop sharing. Or do I have to? No, I got it. And, oh, uh, that's cool. I had the small panels at the bottom, which was really cool. Oh, wait, I did see that one. Didn't he already have that color? That's the one he already yeah, had. Color awesome. right? Oh, it might be out. I think it's out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was with the, the Golden Age characters or whatever. So, well, that's cool. What other artist besides Neil really, like, struck your uh, struck your fancy back then? Of course, Busama, but whose fancy didn't he strike? Right. Um, I really loved, and this I didn't put together till later. I really loved Ross Andrew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, whenever I saw his stuff, I picked it up, and I didn't realize how influenced uh, my own art is by his until decades later. And I was like, "Holy crap!" I looked back at some Ross Andrew stuff. And I'm like, "All right, he did impress me." So then, in what ways do you see that? Posing, action poses, really? yeah. I think you know how the lower legs go and the the feet and stuff. A lot of oh yeah, a lot of stuff like that that really strikes me. Were um, you talking more of his? So my memory, you know, my memory. I can't remember. Exactly. Oh, I know. Are you talking his uh, DC or Marvel stuff or both? Mostly Marvel. I don't Spider actually can think of a DC book he did right now, except the Batman Spider Man, which was awesome. Right. Right. Well, and then you know the story behind that was Superman. Mm. Neil. Oh, they redrew it, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then John Romita Sr. went in and retouched almost every Peter Parker face. <laughs> they want, it, that, that was the very first crossover between the companies. Yeah, so you they know? had a lot of control and they wanted it to look a certain way. And it was great. Which it's that funny was, because that was the one that DC had more control over. So you saw the, the you know the cool panel layouts and stuff, because the one Marvel had control over that John Buscema drew, which I still really enjoy, but Shooter had control over it. So it's that six panel all over the place, and you're just like, man, why didn't you just let John do his thing? You know, like what he did in Avengers and stuff. Yeah. You know, that and even awesome. Conan. Yeah. And it, and it looked like, I, honestly, to me, it looked like John was like, okay, here you go. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he hammered it out. He's like, oh, you, you know. just want me to do six panel grids? Here you go. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it's still very nice, but, you know, yep. what are you going to do? It's big John. Well, yeah. So at what point did you decide, when did the Hubert School come into, uh, come into the picture? Like, how did you discover it? When I was 10, I decided I wanted to draw comics. When I was... 16 or 17 i got really into dimensional animation i had a little super 8 camera mm -hmm. and i started uh animating my little mega superhero figures which kind of sucked for animation so i started <laughs> using gi joes and did some fun stuff with that and i did some claymation and then i started uh sculpting and casting uh foam figures that i built these metal armatures for like you know i learned from the king kong stuff Oh yeah, the same way they did it, and I made a little movie of that. And uh, I wanted to go to uh, USC for film. I really wanted to become a director. And uh, in my, you know, genius brain, I came up with this plan that I would go to the Kubert School because I knew I would be able to draw comic books. I knew that I needed to learn a few things, but I knew I was good enough to draw comics at that time. So I knew sure. I could do that. So I figured I'd go to the Kubert School, um, learn to draw comics, and use my comics career to fund me going to USC for film because I knew that was expensive. And uh, at 17, I really didn't want to write the paper you had to write to uh, apply. For oh, film. really? Yeah. Even back then, you had to write an extensive paper, huh? As far as I remember. Right. Yeah. And I was like, eh. I don't even know what I'd say about why I want to be in film or whatever the heck I had to do. I had no idea. Yeah. And 
you know, there was no internet and I didn't know there's nobody in my school to ask. You know, I had a great art teacher, Mr. D'Angelo, who in when I came into ninth grade, he saw what I could do in my direction. He took me aside and said, look, I'm not going to make you do this shit. I'm going to give you this stuff and we'll figure out stuff you can do. Because oh, cool. obviously you're going to, you know, if you want to go on a career of art, you know, be an illustrator. He was not an illustrator, but he's like, I can, I'll push you this way, which was awesome. So that was really cool. That was super helpful and and probably my formation, just the attitude he had, if nothing else. So, yeah, so I decided I'd try to keep school and, uh, you know, fund my film career. Nice. <laughs> favorite teacher, favorite teacher from the Kubert school. Jose Delbo. Oh man, Jose's great. Jose was just so great. Now you didn't go all three years. And, and I mean, I knew that, now, you know, a lot of this stuff I, I know, but this is for everybody else yeah. watching. Um, year and a half, I think. Is that as long as you went? Not quite a half. I quit. Year and change. Years. So did you. Before the break, second year. So you had Joe though, right? Yeah, I had Joe first and second year. Okay, you did. Okay, cool. Do you remember what he was teaching in first year? Was he story? To, yes. it, it was the story one, whatever it was called. I can't remember the name of the course. Yeah, yeah. Narrative art or whatever they called it. I can't remember. Do you remember? No. What it was I think it was just narrative art. Yeah, I think I it was just. Was. I think it was just blanket narrative art for the first yeah. year. And he taught first, and he taught all three years then. Right. He only yeah. taught two when I, I went. I remember one time in class we had to do this uh it's smart how they did it they had us do like this story or a two-page spread of a story i don't remember how much there was and you had to shade it in pencil mm -hmm. so the whole thing was done on like a rougher paper and pencil shading and when you finish that they're like okay now you gotta ink it i was like <laughs> you know, oh, what, what? what how do you do that and joe took mine as a, a tester so he slapped tracing paper down over my shaded drawings and inked a couple figures. That was awesome. And I think the most memorable thing is it took him like a freaking minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like amazing. And, and you don't have it anymore, of course. I might. I got to look. Oh, um, man, you're lucky. Because he inked. I did a Justice League thing. And I didn't know how to do lighting on this one shot and he did the same thing he put tracing paper over it and just slammed some ink on it and you know real quick pulled out a brush pen you know way before they were cool just whipped out this brush pen and winged it out and i had it but then a bunch of my keyboard school stuff got lost in a flooding type thing when i was let you know Back when I first moved to Florida, I stored a lot of stuff at John Beatty's garage, and he had a little incident there. So, the figures. I know, I know. So we got a question. It says Mr. Sears, your work on XO was phenomenal. How did you find your inspiration with an iconic character who isn't a quote unquote big company character? That's actually a pretty darn good question. Um, I mean, there, there are actually, I. I think Axel had a lot of things going for it. He was a barbarian, which I love, mm -hmm. and yep. a version of Iron Man, who I love as well, and is really cool. Uh, so that really helped. But also, I read, uh, before I started, I got the few uh, Valiant books that they had made uh, before I did XO 14, and they were all really good stories. I got really drawn into the characters back then. So those three things uh, really helped pull me in and um, I just had an affinity for XO, you know, in my own mind. So that was that. That's cool. That's wicked cool. Hey, what was your first first published work? Do newspapers count? Sure. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? In, we can in, go in, up the line. We can go up the line. When I was in third or fifth grade, I don't remember. My mother sent it to me a few years ago. She'd saved it. Did I had really? done these, this black bark cartoon, and they did a feature on me in the local paper and printed the cartoon. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, that would be the first. All right. Well, comic stuff now. Like, how did you break in? Let's go with how you broke in. 
after you after you bounced out after well actually before break because i know you did stuff before um yeah my first this is tough i should actually have dennis ask the questions because i know so much of this <laughs> and dennis doesn't so dennis should probably be the one asking dennis the question but but andy's already half answering them waiting for you to answer him so we'll just go with that <laughs> Well, I was going to say, so after the Kubrick School, go from there. You, t you What made you bail? Uh, I was I was burnt out. I hated to draw. I kind of always hated to draw and having to do it every day. I found brutal, and I couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, so I got out. I said, this isn't for me, and I got out. And I moved back home and moved furniture for a while and thought, my God, this really sucks. <laughs> Man, so, manual labor. It's close. Yeah, it's like, um, and it was, you know, my dad was the, you know, general manager or whatever of the company. So it was an easy to get the job. I didn't have to actually. Oh, it. okay. I worked there every summer, anyways. Oh, right. But then I was like, uh, uh, I think first. Yeah, so I was. I can't remember exactly the timeline. Somewhere in there, I did a, a short stint as a video graphics, a computer graphics guy, which was a lot of fun. It was for a small company. And this is back in 1984 or 5. What computer and, graphics were being done back then? I mean, dude, I was uh, playing Atari back then. And I you knew what those looked like. I had to count every time I clicked the mouse, and you, it would draw a straight line. Oh, and like for this face, I would have eight clicks. That's how much space they had in the game for graphics. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I think the graphics. I think the games were like two hundred fifty-eight k or something. I mean, it was insane. It's like Karateka. Those are the old games like Karateka, and where you could either punch high, punch straight, punch lower, kick. That's your whole thing. No, it was way worse than that. <laughs> way worse. Educational games. There was well, nothing. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I remember, wasn't it 83, 84 when Atari came out? Probably. With yeah. like Space Invaders and shit. I mean, that's yeah, what that's we had. It, it was all pixel art. I mean, there was no yeah. graphics. So, yeah. And they wanted me to stay on. I was like, eh, that's boring. <laughs> I can't yeah. stand it. But uh, I might have done that after. I don't know. I don't know where the timeline is anymore. But in, uh, I decided after trudging through um, uh, some of those jobs that uh, I should probably draw comics and make some money. And I had a fa young family to support that it was just starting. So I did some sample pages. I think they did three. I wish I could find them. I can't even find copies of them. I have no idea what happened to them. And I uh, just showed up at Marvel one day back when you could just drive just down show up, yeah. and show up and ask to see who was free. And this tall, skinny, gangly kid came out, who was Mike Carlin, and uh, took me back and introduced me around. And Larry Hama gave me some work. Oh, nice. And well, I was we'll get sad because uh, I saw, um, I can't remember his name now, but he was editing Spider-Man then. And he said, ah, if you were here you know, a couple weeks ago, if you come back in two or three months, I'll have some Spider-Man for you. I was like, but no, I got Biker Babes. Uh, did that see print? No. I okay, did. that's what I thought. I remember seeing copies of it years ago when we first met, but I didn't I think it's all print. I think I have copies of both of them. I did two, and Larry Hama was was funny. He started cleaning the gun while I was in there, like it was all he was all badass. It was pretty funny. <laughs> he kept it up inside, and uh, <laughs> but back then I would have to think. Was it? Do you remember? Was it a revolver? No, I don't think so. No. It was a, uh, an automatic. Oh, wow. Uh, well, wow. We'll, we'll, we'll bounce around with stuff, but Eric McIntyre wants to know what's made and about, and where can he get it? So take it away, buddy. Maiden, uh, all the main tales are revenge stories. Um, young women who've been cruelly abused or um, murdered or tortured or raped or whatever. Um, there's this force called the maiden that seeks them out 
and finds them and they become a vessel for this vengeful force that uh, um, carries out vengeance on those that wrong them. And I'm saying that so badly. I should have prepared myself. No, that's fine. But this is Maiden. Oh, hold on. I'll full screen, full screen it. it. I'm going to. Give me a second. There you go. Cool. You know, the other way, too, if you want, if you want to pull them up on your screen, I can share your screen, too. So if you want to do that, it's up to you. Um, let's see if I can do that quick. And it's in, and I can answer another part of it. It's in Heavy Metal Magazine. Um, I believe this is the part you'll have to answer. How many issues are 305? The is the, 303, the first okay. chapter. It, in every, the first main story is five chapters. The first was in 303, and the second in 304, the third in 305, the fourth in 306. We missed 307. The fifth is in 308. And the new story starts in 310, the second cool. story. Cool. So there you go. So it's in heavy metal. And I know for a fact 305 is out on the shelf. So you just have to go back and get 303 through 305. And, uh, you know, 306 will be coming out this month of May. So that's where that will be. Well, and that should be a special issue, right? Because aren't, aren't both of you going to be in 306 at the same time? Uh, yes, my CUDA drops in 306. Oh, nice. Yeah, I wasn't, you know, this is the BART, BART episode, so I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. But yeah, CUDA, I thought, did I tell you that already or no? I don't remember. No. Yeah, 30, 306 CUDA debuts, and then the next CUDA comes out in August. So whatever number that is. And I literally just started today. By the way, you stopped. Oh, there it is. Um, do you want me to add that to the stream? These are just uh, images. Oh, yeah, this is grand. Cool. But that was easy to Ooh. give a I taste. Cool. But yeah, that's main. Oh, wow. And yeah, we'll, be cool. in, we'll be in heavy metal for the next six or seven years at least. We might have nice. some soon, too. Very cool. Is there, are they supposed to collect it at some point or is that all in your yeah, if you are doing pamphlet comics, which I guess is what you call normal comics now. Um, and the first one has already come out, which uh, compiled the first two chapters and that sold out. So they're- I It did? Yeah, and I think they're doing a second printing. I never even saw it come out. Yep. Because that's what Keith was telling me about um, Kuda is he reworked the second part of the story that I, like I said, I started drawing today because they're looking to put the two out together, collected like that. And I, I never even saw it come out. So that's kind of annoying because I would assume it was a standalone book, right? Yeah, here it is. I'll share it again. Yeah, let's see. Because now I got I to gotta talk to this funny book store. There it is. Oh, and that's out now? Yeah, it came out a month ago or more. Yeah, I never saw that. I didn't either. Yeah, because I definitely would have bought it. The second issue will compile parts three, four, and five and finish this the first arc. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, sweet. You have to send me that link later because looking at it, it looks like I just buy it from the website. Yeah. So... I think I can order two because I know Dennis wants one. Yeah, it saved me, it saved me a little work there, Andy. Yeah, I will. Yeah, no, that's cool. I did not know they were doing that, so that's very cool. So definitely, uh, guys, you can also get it that way. Uh, let's see. There was another question up here. Oh, here's another question from Michael. If you can reinvent any character or team, who would you choose? Hmm. Reinvent. Single character or team. So, well, I'd love to just take Batman and run with it, but who would? I mean, <laughs> I mean, there you go. I mean, that's that, but that's a it's a simple answer. But I mean, that's kind of to me, it's almost like, well, if he were to ask a follow up and say, "Who's your favorite DC character?" Would you say Batman? Then, yes, 
Yeah. So, I mean, I, cause I think that's what it is. It's kind of like, who's your favorite character, you know? Yep. Would you ever want to, if DC, if DC said, Bart, we want you to do a Justice League mini, uh, Justice League Europe uh, miniseries or one shot, would you have any interest in doing that? My heart would for sure. And then it would depend on several other things. Well, besides, and you could write it. So creatively, you could write it. If I was going to do it, I would uh, beg for Keith and and uh, oh really, Mattis to write it. Oh hell yeah. Oh okay. Oh, yeah, I would cool. want I would want to relive that old glory. I mean, if oh, they yeah. wanted me to take over Justice League and do it a new way, that's a whole different right. Story. Uh, but if it was just a one shot to you know to harken back to the day, I would definitely want Keith to write the damn thing. Yeah. Favorite character in Justice League. Europe, that is. Justice League Europe. Captain Adam, followed by Metamorpho. Yeah. What? You what? No love for uh, Crimson Fox? I mean, you did make her own. She was on TV. <laughs> that was her, huh? <laughs> that, that was supposedly her on I TV. The Rock that, never hit her on TV. <laughs> yeah. That was. Uh, let's see. Eric's got another question. Oh, wrong one. How was it dealing with Andy at the Kubrick School? Well, we didn't go together. So, because I was teaching at the time, and there was this yeah. annoying kid. Oh, kid, he'd show up in my classes, skipping his third year classes to hang out in my class whenever I taught. And yeah, uh, and that was Andy. And that was. And I'd go hang out at his apartment afterwards and yeah. drink beer and watch him draw Justice League and and do my homework. Yeah, so talk about art, comics. And talk, talk about art. I'd sit on the because his his drawing table because he lived in an apartment. His drawing table was in the bedroom, so I'd sit on the end of the bed with a lap board. Oh my God! I just realized, Dennis, he was grooming me. Ew! That's so disgusting. I had no idea. I was I was I was so young and impressionable. I had no idea this older man was grooming me. Ew. So, so this was Bart's fault how you turned out. <laughs> yes. I was, you don't understand, Dennis. I was pure as the driven snow. He was. You know, I was going to have a conversation with your mother, but now we know it's Bart. Wow. Had I known this when we were down in Tampa Bay talking, we would have had other words. So, <laughs> Here, here, here's a here's a fun question. Then we'll get back to the early part of your career. Read it, Dennis. I can't read that. Since you have known Andy for such a long time, would you say this is the most annoying his Cowboys fandom has ever been, or has he been worse? Oh, he's oh, been way he worse. He's been oh. like, when the Cowboys were winning, the call like, like, like twenty five right? years ago. You got to Well, you got to remember. When I met him was right when the dynasty of the Cowboys began and when they went for the three Super Bowls. So, of course. And you know how Andy Smelter's about here normally. Back then, it was, I can't even reach as far. <laughs> That's right. Eric Eric got it right. Grooming me for a successful career. That's right. Um, so, what was, what, okay, so I have it and I, I, I know how your memory is. So I'll have to kind of prod to get some stuff. When did you do that Sectars mini comic? You remember that? Okay. Well, when I first got to Marvel, I did that the the first chapter of uh, Iron Rose, I think it was called, which was never printed eight page backup or an eight page story for Marvel Black and White or whatever. Oh, that's the bike thing, the uh, Hama yeah. bike thing. Yeah. And I had a pencil and thought I was luckily handing off to a skilled inker, which turned out to be me, unfortunately. And uh, and there I did the second one. And when I knew I had to ink it, and after my experience on the first one, I penciled the crap out of it. It took me forever. Even uh, though you were, oh, because you were to ink the second one too. I Yeah, I figured I had to. And it really slowed me down because I, right. oh, I hated the first one. I really hated what I did to get it done. So I took my time in the second one, but I think before I did the second one, I did a Sector's toy job. Sector, yeah. The you sector mean job. this? 
Skulk and Trankula. Yeah, but I don't. Which is a lot I don't of fun. know. Did Did you do the cover? No, I didn't think so. I don't remember that mini comic, dude. You can't. I check eBay every now and then. I actually did. I did a live stream going reviewing a couple books uh, last week. I think during the week uh, on my own channel, and this was one of the ones I pulled up. Um, I'm just going to go full screen for a second so people can see it better. So, uh, you so know, what's that? That was fun. I really love that. Well, you can definitely see. I mean, this is this is like early, early. I mean, like you said, it's one yeah, of your first jobs. My second, I think it was my second professional comic book company job. But just looking at it, you know, the page layout, the way you did it, even just the subtlety with the head tilt of that monster in the first panel, you know, to, his he his head is tilting, juxtaposing his shoulders. You know, it's got and it's got so many key things like trademarks and there's this one panel i'm looking for in here that oh this i love that that's oh, trademark yeah. bark bark female right there <laughs> yeah that was so much fun i wish i i wish that was all the stuff i got at marvel i would have never left there but here's the panel that even to this day if i didn't know it i'd go oh yeah that's bark the twist on that guy and the camera angle, looking past him and stuff, you know. And same That's with cool. the back shot. Yeah. And I was just thinking that. Which one was it? Yeah, the Ardberg. So this is something I, I check eBay every now and then. You just can't find them. So, so. Where, where did it come out with? I remember Sectars because I love the comic. It came with the, the cartoon. It, yeah, it came with the toys, right? It the, you know, that it had the spider, which had the, you could put your hand in and move it. You know, I had a little glove in there for spider fingers. Thank yeah. You. And uh, the the action figure. So it was a big box. Oh, okay. Oh, came. so it wasn't just the figure with the couple no. with the, like He-Man did? I don't even know if they sold the figure separately or not, but I think that only came with if you bought the, you know, the bigger two-pack with the, the spider and the toy. Right. Okay. And the guy. And you know, there's no credit in. You don't. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you don't remember who inked it, or did you ink it? No, I didn't ink it. I have no idea. You didn't. Okay. I want to say Al Milgram, but that's probably wishful thinking. I don't think it was. I don't think so. Even at that time period, I think I'd be able to tell Al's inks. I, I would think so. But, yeah. It was probably some newer guy. So then, what happened after the two uh, Larry Hama jobs? Well, that recall? second one burnt me out of comics. I was just so slow. I wasn't making any money. I wasn't getting it done. So I just faded out of comics. And meanwhile, our good buddy, Mark Pennington, had been hired. He had graduated from Hubert School and got hired out of Hubert School to design G.I. Joe for Hasbro in-house. And uh, he was bugging them to hire me to do um, uh, what were called... Um, presentation pieces mm -hmm. which would be like he'd design a character and an outside artist would take it and do some form of painting of it you know decent sized and then they would sure. have a presentation for the owners and they'd show all these new potential characters and the owners would pick which ones they wanted to make into toys and that was how they did most things in the line i think so um uh, he got me started on that. I remember my first painting. I can't remember the name of the character. It was for some monster line they had, which I don't even remember the name of. And it was this big goopy character. And I had this massive painting of it. And I never, and I, I had like two weeks to do it. And like, I finished the first one. Well, I will say three days before it was due, I threw out the first one because it was such a piece of crap. So I painted a whole new one and finished it the morning of the third day and got in the car and drove it to Rhode Island since I no longer had time to actually FedEx it. Oh, wow. Dropped it off at the gate or with the guard or however that was. And that was my the first one I did for him. And then I started doing uh, G.I. Joe presentation art for them. Did you work in-house? Did you nope. ever work in-house? 
Yeah, but this was out of house still. Right, right, right. I did I that just, for a few months yeah. and, and did some other freelance jobs um, for TSR, which I ended badly because I got, they offered me an in-house job, which I took. TSR? Hasbro, Hasbro did. Oh, yeah. And I took the in-house job and then I wasn't able to finish my TSR work. So that oh. flittered away because I could never do the two things at once. Pennington would kill me. I'd go into work and, you know, we'd work kind of across from each other and he'd be over there inking pages. Oh, really? It has, it has bro. Oh. Or sleeping oh. under his desk if he had a long night. Oh. And I could never do outside work at my Hasbro desk. It just never could. Right. But it would crack me up. I'd go in and be. So what, what projects did they have you on at TSR? Uh, I did a Wolverine adventure book, which I guess Andy's reaching for. I did a Doctor Strange adventure book. And then I started to do a, um, a uh, I don't know, one of the fantasy ones that is what I bailed on and got fired off of. I can't remember the name of that one. Okay. But I only got a few drawings finished for that. I think they used them in the book and got somebody else to do the rest, but I don't remember. Well, that's cool. Then what what took it back to comics? Well, it's funny because I worked at Hasbro a year exactly to the day. I had really? My, I had my exit interview when I was leaving the building a year from the day I was started. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, but I they brought me in to help on G.I. Joe and they immediately bought cops from some outside source. So they put me on cops and it was really cool because they wanted to do it on the G.I. Joe buck, you know, those little skinny shoulder guys, but they were going to do them, I guess, five inches instead of three inches. Mm -hmm. And I talked them into doing the different size heroic bucks. So we got to do the fat guy buck, the skinny guy buck and the muscular guy buck. Oh, right. so I had the bucks for them. And then engineering, of course, made them work. Um, but uh, that was really cool. So I got to design the cops line. And uh, that should have been really successful. But they kind of didn't. The way the toy business works, my understanding is they didn't print enough on their first run to fulfill orders. And so the second year was doomed because they didn't, never fulfilled orders on the first. Because yep. they had Air Raiders at the same time, which was a company-owned product. I don't know if you remember Air Raiders. No. Yep. Nobody does. Oh, Air Raiders. Yeah, yeah, Air I Raiders. do. I don't, I don't think I ever saw them, though. Did they, they actually go to production? Crap out of that. And they oh. sold nothing. So when you go in, like, the Hasbro store where Hasbro employees could shop, all they had was Air Raider stuff. I mean, oh. they had tons of that that they could never sell. So my understanding was that they um, killed cops to try to push Air Raiders. Oh. Which is stupid because cops, I guess, people really enjoyed it and couldn't find it in stores. So it was good. They kicked themselves in their butt. But I did cops, and um, DC was brought in to do the comic book. Andy Helfer and oh, who was the writer? I'm blanking on his name, and I feel bad. Oh, shit. Was it Barr? No. Was it Mike Barr? No. I don't think so. No. Uh, I don't remember. I'll think of it. I'll look it up quick. But um, they came in to uh, talk about the the line. And usually they just talk to the marketing people. But the head of marketing, he was a super cool guy. And he liked me a lot and knew I liked comics. So he let me come into the meeting. And Helfer, he, and he's like, bring your comic card. Bring your comic card. So I was like, okay. So I brought some of my stuff in and, you know, all my stuff for, they had all my stuff for cops. And, Doug Mensch. Looking through. Doug Mensch. Doug yeah, Mensch. Doug Mensch. Sorry. Sorry, Doug. And um, I remember Helfer kind of looked up at me and said, Hey, you want to draw some Cox? I said, Sure. So he hired me. Uh, yeah, so he started talking to me and hired me to do Cops number three because it was already late. Imagine that. That's sure. That my first clue about how comics work. Yeah. Cops issue three of a brand new comic series. Of course. Um, but, uh, you know, I called Andy when I got the job and 
And I was like, okay, I quit. He's like, oh my God, you can't quit. I can't, I can't guarantee you comic work. I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm fine. Just send me the work. So I did cops number, th- no, cops number four he hired me to do. I'm sorry. Cops number four. So I, I did cops number four. I quit Hasbro because I knew I could not do both. Oh, yeah. Um, and I quit uh, cops number four. I did cops number four. And then I finished that and said, what's next, Andy? And he said, okay, I need you to do cops number three. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're kidding me, right? And uh, nope. So I did uh, cops number three and said, what's next? And he said, uh, I want to make a new Arsenal Spectre. I said, okay, sounds great. So somewhere in there, uh, I moved, that doesn't matter. Um, he sent me Spectre number, I think it was 18, 24 page stories back then, which I yeah. love are great. And uh, I was, I had finished the sixth page and I got a call on a Monday morning and Helfer said, hey, we're doing this big crossover event, Invasion, and the artist just quit. I need you to do issue three of Invasion. I'm like, sweet, 80 pager. Sign me up. Nice. It's like, yeah, Keith Givens writing it, you know, so you'll have layouts, which is how Keith writes, which is awesome. I learned, I don't know how much I learned from that. Though. I can't even put a value on that experience. Um, I'm like, great, sounds good. He's like, okay, um, you got to finish Spectre first, though. I'm like, okay. Yeah, you know, of course. Sure. He's like, I need you to be in the office this Friday to talk about invasion. I'm like, okay, I can drive down. He's like, I need you to bring inspector finished. I'm like, uh, it's, you know, two o'clock Monday. I just finished page six. There's 24 pages in this story. I have to leave at 6 a.m. Friday right. to get to New York by, you know, noon or whatever. That's 18 pages, Andy. That's three working days, really. He's like, yeah, I know. You can do it. 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 This is a lot of my conversations with Andy. There's no way I can do that. Yes, you can. You can do it. You can do it. And uh, somehow I did it. I urge you not to go by Spectre 18. And Mark Pennington, I got to be my anchor. And the first six, five five or six pages look great. And... uh, Beyond that, close your eyes. But cover's got really nice too. And I drove to. Uh, yeah, he saved me on that. Cover's he great. Have, he didn't have to do eighty pages in three days, um, but he was new. It was his first, you know, big job, which was really cool, and uh, to be able to work with him like that. But sure. um, yeah, so then I drove to New York. I got, you know, there's no reason for me to go down there. You know, like this invasion, uh, you know, whatever. Just, but anyhow, so I started invasion the next week and I had to do eight pages a week for 10 weeks to get it done. Oof. I think now is bullshit timeline, but they all were. So who knows? Oh, yeah. I did it. And the only way I could do it is I took Andy's script. I blew up the page to 11 by 17, put it on a light box, put it in my borders, made something cool and went to town. So only <laughs> there you go. Look, somebody's going to go by. Pages out. Blind away. <laughs> AJ Cubs going to go by speculating oh, right now. Telling me, man. <laughs> telling me. Where did you? Where did uh, that single issue of armor fit into all this? Because I thought that was before DC, but it wasn't. Yes, that was before Hasbro. Maybe some of that's what I showed Andy. I don't remember, but I took forever on it because I I don't think they ever actually fired me. No, I don't think they did because um, I finished that issue and they had Rudy Nebra's ink it and it mm-hmm. looked spectacular and absolutely nothing like what I drew, which right. is fine. I was okay with that. And uh, uh, they called me and asked me if I would do armor regularly. And I said, is Rudy going to ink it? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, can I just do breakdowns? They said, no, we want full pencils. I said, well, if Rudy's going to ink it, it's absolutely useless for me to do full pencils. And we had this back and forth and they wanted me to do full pencils and the fruit he was thinking that there's no way I was going to do full pencils. So I said, no. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a, it's a, it is a, it's a great looking issue, but 
there's got to be, even to this day when I look at it, I, there's like just these few things that you do that if people know, can go, oh, yeah, that's Bart. Oh, yeah. that's Bart. But if you just give it to somebody to go, who drew this? They think it was probably, you know, somebody in Neil's studio with Rudy, you know. Yeah. Fixing it up. Yeah. And Rudy's great. I mean, he did. He does a phenomenal job. I wish I had one of the original pages, honestly. That stuff was, that was cool. You just got to call up Neil. He'll give them to you. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably watching Neil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's doing his own live stream right now. Um, uh, let's see. I, uh, it's Jack and Joe. I'll assume you might know who that is. I know Jack and Joe. Okay, good. Just want to want to acknowledge that they said hey. So um, that's I. You know, I like I said, I knew about most of these stories and stuff. I will do this. We'll jump up to this issue of uh, Spider Man. That you know, so Dennis is a huge X Men fan. You know, okay. huge X Men fan. I'm going to bet. I could be wrong, but I don't think Dennis owns this issue that has an X-Men character in it. Ooh, that great cover. I like that cover. Peter Parker? Which one is it? Here, I'll full screen for you. I know your eyes suck, Dennis. They do. Four. Number, number four. I'll tell you in one second. But wait, I'm Dennis. Sure, I'm pretty sure I do. The, the one time... And just from this one page, I was like, damn it, I want to see Bart draw a full issue of X-Men from this one page right there, that one panel. See that bad boy, Dennis? I do. I do. It looks awesome. I forgot about that. I don't have any of that art. I don't have any art. So what am I talking about? I know. I was going to say, you don't have anything anyhow. So I don't think I even have JPEGs of, of pencils in that or, scan, yep. or copies of the pencils in that. I was just say copies, maybe. I you own have it. it? Yeah, do. Damn but it's not signed, though. That is true. It is not signed. We'll fix Ooh. that. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, I know we'll be going down to Tampa Bay sometime here. That's right. Uh, he says he remembers that cover, and that's Joe. Um, all right, Dennis, ask some questions, man. Don't just sit there like a little bump on a log. Come on now. Do you mean? You guys have been doing good. Well, everybody, you know I'm I'm a huge X-Men fan. And, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I wish you would have done like a ton of X-Men because I just love your work on it. Um, uh, out of the X-Men, who is your favorite? That's an easy one. Is it? Wolverine. Who? Wolverine. Oh, yeah, Wolverine. I've, I should figure. You're a Batman guy, so it would I make lost. sense. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. So if they will, if somebody walked up to you right now and said, "Million bucks, you can draw what any character you want that you didn't create." We already know Batman. How would it be? I don't know. Hmm. Well, for a million bucks, any character I want that I didn't create? Yep. Casper. Casper. You bet. A ghost. <laughs> Five minutes, one million bucks. What are you talking about? It'd be that Alpha Flight snow issue, the Bart Sears one. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even say Casper? I'd just be like, oh, I'm going to draw all the X-Men in a blizzard. <laughs> and I'm modeled after Alpha Flight number six or whatever issue it was. So, you know, the correct answer to that question, by the way, was first man. But that's OK. I've drawn okay. him. I've drawn I, him. I, no, no. He said that you didn't create. It didn't have to be somebody you've never drawn. Oh, here you go. That would be first man. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> Penumbra. That's I was going to say it'd be the female. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, Michael, I, I saw that long box, that short box of wizards, and I was looking through it because there's one issue of wizard I wanted, but he didn't have it. So that's because uh, Michael got it. One of your buddies, no, it was before he bought it. One of your, uh, I assume this is Joe says, Bar if Bart could be any superhero he wanted, who would it be? Ooh, not, not draw, but actually be. Oh. Well, 
I mean, you've got to say you can't be Superman, right? Because that's like every power. So who wouldn't pick Superman? Right. Um, well, Superman doesn't drink well, scotch. You know who, who does? Constantine. I would pick Batman from the movies because his superpower is he's super rich. That's true. Constantine. Oh, well, what about Tony good. Stark? Tony Stark drinks. Oh, yeah. was that whiskey? You could be Tony Stark. No, this is scotch, my friend. I know. That's what I was trying to think. Was it whiskey that Tony drank? <laughs> Agent Cub <laughs> says, Bart, would you sign my copy of Spectre 18 I just bought? <laughs> Here's my question to Agent Cub. Where the hell did you just buy it? Because if it was eBay, it couldn't have cost more than a buck. You're paying well, more for shipping. Wow. Why would you say that? Because it's Spectre. Nothing to do with Bart. <laughs> um uh, oh, damn it. I had a great follow-up fun question, too, that I totally forgot because my mind's going. Oh, this was the question. Who's your favorite Batman actor out of all the Batman actors since there's been so many now? Uh, uh, I, I know it's George Clooney, but omit him. <laughs> I never thought I would like Michael Keaton, and he proved me wrong. But my favorite was uh, uh, Ben, what's his name? Uh, Affleck. Affleck. Was it because of that? Of, of, I assume it's because of his acting and stuff, and how he portrayed the character, not just because of the costume. Because I like, I like Affleck as well, but I really love the costumes. I think they finally got it right. I think, I think him as Bruce Wayne and him as Batman was perfect, and I did love that thick, yeah, kind of armor yeah. Batman look because that's, that's how I drew him in Dark Knight Twenty Three. Yeah. Know, yeah, just like muscles, but that's what they were going for. So I like that a lot. Uh, see, I, I I thought Ben was the perfect. I actually thought he was absolutely perfect as Bruce Wayne. I thought he was a good Batman, but I thought he was hands down the best Bruce Wayne to to ever be on the screen. And that surprised the hell out of me. Yep. Well, who the hell is your favorite Batman then? If it isn't if if you're saying that Ben, this is Dent for Dennis. If Ben was your favorite Bruce, but you didn't love him as much as Batman. Who's your favorite Batman then? Mine would probably be Christian Bale, followed by Michael. Bale yeah, was really good. Yes, I liked him. I couldn't get past it. You know, he just he was wearing body armor. Yeah, but the third movie, I thought was yeah. Well, yeah. So, you know, because I mean, I agree with Michael Keaton. I mean, I still hold. It's almost a draw for me with Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck because I still really like the look of the first Batman costume that Michael Keaton wore. Yeah, that was you know, cool. Besides, yeah. besides the fact he couldn't turn his head, yeah. you know, seriously, he couldn't. But right. I really like the look of the, the costume. It looked really cool. But then, you know, I just think <clears throat> what they did with Ben, they just couldn't do back then. Oh, no. You know, they didn't have the, the technology for that kind of – right appliance and stuff right anyway, but that, um but, but then again i thought stupid parts. I, yeah i thought jack was a great uh joker i really loved his rendition oh, yeah. he surprised me with it i thought he was going to be terrible but i loved him i yeah. agree i agree what Although, did you think of uh jared Le jared leto's joker in the very end of Justice League, the Snyder Cut, because you saw that. You, I know you saw the Snyder Cut, but you saw that scene too, right? Yeah. I, I mean, it's okay. I didn't. Yeah. I, I don't think it holds a candle to Dark Knight Two, uh, and um, I'm sorry, what's his name? Who did Joker? Oh, Heath, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. That was just unmatchable. I don't know how he did that. That was just yeah, brilliant. I thought. What is the what if you pick one job out of your whole career that you just love and it can't be any of your own stuff? So, no ominous stuff. No, I don't love any of that. Well, you know, I was trying not to have you say that. <laughs> it's hard, blood, blood one, man, because <laughs> I like things for different reasons. It's hard to have a favorite, like, nobody has a favorite child, right? Well. I mean, I only have one, so I do. Being I stopped it. I stopped it once. So I don't have to answer that question. Um, but um, and yeah, you can have a favorite child. You just don't want to say it on YouTube. I I have a handful of favorites. Okay, like what? 
the first Dark Knight trilogy. I did I'm, 20, 21, 22. Oh, right. Yeah, Legend of the Dark Knight. Yeah. I like one issue to me. The second one I did, uh, Dark Knight 200. Mm, yeah. Double sized. Um, so, Batman, imagine that. I was going to say, uh, yeah. The. I really like the Cat Falcon stuff I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Until I had to, you know, start inking it because right. it flamed out. But yeah. don't like that stuff so much. But the stuff uh, I penciled Bobby Inked was great. I like yep. that. Um, I can't think of anything. So I'm looking at my shelf trying to get some idea. While you're doing that, Justice League Europe, is there any single issue? Of Just What's that? Blade. I got to oh, Blade. The Blade. Oh, I know you're Blade. I think your favorite issue of Blade. Pages. What's that? That's pencil six pages of Blade, and that's some of my favorite stuff. Yeah, but if I remember right, we were talking one time. Isn't your as a whole that Wizard half your favorite? Yep, that's pretty cool. And some cabbage ink that, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Which is Justice awesome. League Europe. If does any one issue of Justice League Europe automatically pop up? The extremist issues. That yes. that run. Yeah, I yeah. Literally hated the fact because I didn't find out until I drew it that they were animatronics from a theme park. Right. I hated that, but I mean that was Justice League. Um, but I did years later do a proposal to DC oh, yeah. with the extremists and using a bunch of unused characters, which I really loved. It was really cool that I was gonna do until Things flamed out with me in DC. Right. So that sucked. I'd love to do that again someday because that was a blast. Oh, I yeah. Love no. Extremist. That'd be really cool. And that, that art and that run of, and that time of uh, Justice League was was top notch. Randy was hitting some his stride and I was feeding him good stuff. Yeah. That was fun stuff. Well, you could definitely see where you, you just hit this peak. Not peak, but you hit your stride. Yeah, you know, um, that's kind of a peak. I mean, some of the later stuff yeah. I had to do while I was doing Dark Knight, so it got a little rush, maybe. I don't know, didn't feel like it, but yeah, I don't remember. I do know that kind of well, I remember the first page of Dark Knight. You originally because I remember that was Helfer, wasn't it, too? Yep, yeah, because Helfer, this is great. <laughs> Helfer was always like, okay, on this Dark Knight, you don't have a deadline. Take as long as you want. It's not scheduled. So he drew this first page. And it's the first page that's in the first issue. But he rendered the shit out of it. Like tons of feathering, really lush looking. Yeah. Like you almost don't want to ink it. Yeah. <laughs> and this Randy, is, would have, Randy would have had a dream ink. Yeah. And this was when I was in the Kubert school. I was in the third year of the Kubert school. And, um, <laughs> You know, and then Helfer hits hits him with the bomb of, oh no, nope, there's a deadline. It's going to come out. Uh, we need you to get the book done. So he's like, okay. So he traced it off and went with the style where he didn't sharpen his pencil. And uh, I thought, you know, I think once you hit the once again hit the rhythm I, on that, I slide, love that stuff. Honestly, that stuff is I awesome. Love that stuff. I wish I had the balls to do that on every job. I love it's it. awesome. It's very, you know, and it's, I found I could pencil it driving in a car or riding in a car. Yeah. It, it was, well, it's just, it's, I had to do it so fast. I had no choice and I, I had to travel during that time. Yeah. And, uh, I was able to, you know, get a half page done in eight hours in a car. It was awesome. And Randy, Randy inked the shit out of that stuff oh, too. Great. That was, that was awesome. I love that job. Actually, you know what? If I remember right, didn't Steve Olaf color that stuff? Yes, he did. He did a good job on that stuff too. That's that's yeah, one job that, that I know was, got that was still when the paper wasn't glossy. Yeah. So it was like fully computer colored. Well, simply computer colored. So they had right. it had um, you know fades and tone in it, but it was that paper that sucked in the ink, so it was kind of muted. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. That's how I'd like every comic to ever be printed. Well, and the thing too is that's one of those jobs that I know got a reprint. I want to say in Germany. Did you get one? Because it's never been reprinted over here, but they did do a reprint in a foreign country, and I want to say it was Germany, but I don't recall. You're, I guess you're right. They never did that one. No. 
They never even did it in a compilation of like, oh, let's reprint, you know, eight issues, two story arcs. And they've reprinted three issue story arcs before. So it's just one of those things where it's like. And they, they did my, uh, the 200. Yeah. And it's awesome because they did it on that, that muted paper. Did they really? Yeah. What's the trade paperback? What's the cover? Oh, yeah. It looks awesome. I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so muted. Yeah. It's just, it's just beautiful stuff. I yeah. love it. Yeah, no, that's it's cool stuff. Like that. hmm. That's super cool stuff. Huh. I think it's the only one they didn't reprint, too. I think they skipped over it. Huh. I don't know about, I mean, I know they reprinted. No, that's not really true because if I recall, they never reprinted like the Gil Kane three issue story arc. They they really picked and choose with the Legends of the Dark Knight and what they wanted, you know, to reprint. But they did great. reprint the Venom storyline with that was Russ Braun inked by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. But I think the only reason they did that is because of a kind, you know, the Venom stuff. Isn't that the stuff that turned Bane into Bane or yeah. some shit? Yeah, that was the, why. That, uh, story that told the origination of Bane. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Eclipso and Stipple. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. All that those was a crazy. Circles. Yeah. Well, that was like the cover you did, did on Justice League Europe with all the goddamn starfish. Yeah. Oh. That was an, that was another That's one. A brilliant idea for a cover. I was in my I was in a senior year at the Kubert School. That was another one. I was doing homework and you're you sitting on the edge of the bed on my lap board and you've got this idea and you're drawing all these little starro starfish all over the cover. So that is just the craziness. What is uh what, all right, well, I'm trying to think. Any other uh, questions you got there, big guy, Dennis? Well, yeah, the the one. Did you ever, and I was trying to, I don't think so. You never drew Alpha Flight in any, you didn't guess pencil, did you? I don't think so. I mean, I've drawn um, Sasquatch. He was an Alpha Flight, right? Yeah. yeah. That That's what I wanted to know because he's one of the coolest ones. Like John Burns, for me, John Byrne, his Sasquatch is one of my favorites. And I kept saying... I wonder. I wonder what Bart Bart Sasquatch. I bet it would be really freaking cool. You got but it, Dennis. You I have to own it. it. I'm done, my friend. You own it, Dennis. You have to. It was a saber tooth miniseries. That's X Men. It's a trade paperback too. And I'm not joking. I'm saying, how could you not own that? It's I would own it. I would it's own a... it. But I don't remember. That's why I'm saying. I'm asking. Did I would not know that? There it is. I, I didn't remember that. Yeah, Sasquatch is in it. And yeah, yeah it's kick four ass. issue miniseries that they did a trade from, which I should have, but I don't see it either. That was the one where you drew a page that they said was too gross and you had to redraw yeah. it. Yep. So they showed the spikes going through Sasquatch. So I had What's that called? A bungee one. pit? Pardon? Is, that, is it a bungee pit? Is that the name of yeah. it? Uh, yeah, Sasquatch fell into a bungee pit and he did a splash page looking down on him. Sasquatch is on his back with all the bungee spikes coming through him. And they're like, yeah, you need to redraw that. <laughs> it was a splash. So the splash became the edge of a pit. Sasquatch looking over it. Okay. All right. Oh, look at this. You turned somebody into a Pucks fan. The, uh, I got paid for it. Look at the That's power awesome. you had. No, I got to go look it up. Leandro Allegren says Bucks is my new NFL team because Bart's here said so. Yes. That's awesome. Michael Michael actually wants to ask Dennis a question. He says, what is that shirt and why did you pay for it? Oh, no. And did you pay for it? Sorry. Uh, of course I paid for it. It's Star Trek. It's all the captains. It's, it's all the captains. And then it actually lists them. And, and then even on the back, you know, it's Starship Enterprise. Yeah, baby, this is a this is a three sixty degree shirt. This ain't just one side of a shirt. I mean, of course, I paid a lot for it. All right, Bart, no pressure because Dennis is here. Pick one: Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Wars. Oh God damn! Hold on, Dennis, I'll do it for you. You lost him. Just kidding. 
<laughs> All right, that that's two shows in a row. You've knocked me out, oh. Andy. I did watch every episode of Star Trek when it came out with my bowl of chocolate ice cream. Couldn't nice. wait for it. Loved that show. Yep. Hey, here's a little tidbit that I didn't know, and I'll see if Dennis knows this. I don't assume, Bart, you will because you're not a Trekkie. I did not know this. Graham Nolan actually told us this last week on a professional stream. Um, oh, my God. Now I'm blanking on the name. Hold on. I got to look because he texted it to us. You remember the woman from the 50s that had the had the puppet? She was very popular. Oh, yeah. One of the, yeah. She wrote an episode of Star Trek. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you knew that. Did you yeah. know that, Dennis? Do you know who I'm talking about? Her name. No, I'm trying to think. Woman with a puppet. I'll tell you in a second. Hold on. It was uh, DC Fontana. No. <laughs> no, I'm looking at my I'm looking at my text because Graham texted it. Sherry Lewis. Yeah, Sherry Lewis. And it was the Lights of Zatar. Oh. She no. wrote that episode. Yep. Huh. See? You wow, you knew that in Dennis. Every day. day. Favorite yeah. captain, Dennis. Ah, uh, Kirk. I actually have a T-shirt, which had I known this, I would have wore that one. It's the 10 reasons why Kirk is better than Picard. Oh, it's a tough one. It's and that was actually printed before the Picard current season came out. Otherwise, it would be a hands-down no-brainer. <laughs> uh, let's see. Favorite current show you're watching now? Uh, the new season of Handmaid's Tale. We just started that. Oh, okay. I've never watched Which it. Which is much better than I expected it to be, honestly. Have you watched, and if you haven't, don't waste your time, Stowaway yet? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> well, then don't. <laughs> that good, huh? Yeah, that Dennis good. and I both watched it. We're, we're, we're going to talk about it on Friday. Yeah, it, you don't. There's not much to talk about, but we are going to talk about it. I, I think when it actually ended, it was one of those endings where you're you're going, well, I can't really see how this could go any further, but there's no way they're just going to end it like this. And then the screen goes black and the credits pop. And I was like, oh, yeah, they did. That's my artsy. No, I wouldn't call it that. New, um, no remorse on Amazon. No. Oh, have you watched that? Did you say yes. you did? Is it good? No remorse. Uh, I didn't find it. It's like, the thing, but it was good. I mean, it was really cool. It's the guy that plays Creed. Oh God! Yes. What's his name? I'm blanking on his name. Damn it, right. Michael. 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 B. Jordan. B. Jordan, and it's the Tom Clancy thing. Yes. And it's uh, there are sequels. I mean, I, I wanted to really be grabbed and pulled in, which I wasn't, and maybe that's because I watch it like it. I turn it on at eleven at night before I go to bed, and you know, I'm half asleep and. But it, it didn't grab me, and I really wanted it to. But it was really good. The action was great. The first eight minutes are like you're in a, what, a Black Ops video game. It's pretty cool. I made Asher watch the first eight minutes, and he's like, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. I'm a little <laughs> – dude, but see, your, your review – listen to this review. I'll repeat back basically what you said. I, I hope It you didn't know. grab me. It wasn't gripping, but it's really good. And I'm like, well – the trailer doesn't grab me, but I'm I'm curious because I love the actor. So I'm just I well, don't know. I, I would I would say it's really good because the actor is he's one of those actors you like to watch. I mean, no matter what yeah, he's you're, awesome. You you just you want to watch him. And uh, uh the action's really, really good. Uh it's just the story just didn't the story itself. The story itself and maybe some of the directing didn't pull those heartstrings that you want to really draw you into the movie. It just didn't do that for me. And like I say, that might be because I watched it in two sittings because I fell asleep oh. the first time late at night and finished it working the next day. So, right. I, you know, maybe those were factors because I wasn't, you know, just completely focused on the movie. Right. But, you know, I think it missed. I honestly think it missed those marks but it's it's really good i'll watch it again probably two or three more times but it's not like i don't know 
yeah. I can't think of a movie that I want to think of right now, but I hear you. Know. I hear you. <laughs> oh, Agent Cub says the ending was blah. What? Agent Cub says the ending was very yeah. blah. It was set up, so let's do a series of movies, definitely. Yeah. I don't think I. Uh, I don't know. I, I. You know, I like. Um, oh my God! What's the one with the dude from The Office? That's a series. Oh, it's the same Tom Clancy writer. Yeah, I know, but what's the Jack Ryan? Jack, Jack Ryan, I love. Those are great. So, yeah, I can't wait for the next. And you know, there, you know, uh, Amazon. I believe it's Amazon. Got the rights for. Uh, Dennis and I were just talking about him, the Tom Cruise, where Tom Cruise should never have played the character. Oh, Reacher, Jack Reacher. Yeah, Jack yeah. Reachers. Yeah, you know, you you know, they got the rights to that, and That's you know cool. who they cast. Yeah, those movies are good. It's funny because I've read some of the Reacher stuff, and I see Tom Cruise, and I'm like, he's well, you know who they, you know who supposedly is cast to play him? In those, oh, they're getting somebody else. Yeah, for who? the show, for the series, for the series. Who? You watch Teen Titans on DC. Plus, or yes. it, the guy that plays Hawk. Oh, that's awesome. That guy's huge. That's awesome. I love that dude, man. I know. He's awesome. He's a, he's a great Hawk. He's a great superhero. I love that dude. He was I in know. a movie I saw where he was a, a boxer, I think, or something. Slow budget movie. He's a boxer and he's kind of. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. What was that on? All movie is probably on Amazon or Netflix. Oh, no. I never I saw that. I'd search it up, but I can't even, I don't even know his name. But it was yeah, really good. Had, you just have to search Teen Titans. And it's just, you know, that movie grabbed me more than No Remorse. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. This is so funny. I can't, but I still can't believe it's Spark Sears. Is he putting out a book on Indiegogo? No. No. I am doing a book with a new company called Zoop. Oh, show the cover if you want. Uh, July 6th, it should. It's a new crowdfunding platform. Show the show the share the screen again. Oh, Mikey's coloring it, and it looks awesome. Oh, has he done it yet, or no? He's working on it. He sent me like some. He sent me like two samples. Like he's got oh, like cool. at the top done. Let me share. Is he still doing Maiden? Uh, I no. Oh. Um. Ooh. He's done those heads at the top there, and he did them normal lit and then lit from Brutes and the Pumpkins Orange Energy. Oh, cool. Like, Which one do you like? I'm like, they both look awesome. So I'm kind of hoping he does them both, and I have to choose. Well, explain what it is so people know. This is a uh, small book. It's five by eight, uh, 148 pages of headshots that I nice. have of which I've done probably 400 at least. I don't know. I've done a lot of headshots. And uh, I will probably do a headshot a day during the campaign. Oh, the level. Oh, that's cool. New headshot. And I'm going to do characters I've never done before for those headshots. So that should be fun. Oh. It's still getting worked on all the details, but. Yeah, that'll be weird. How We're going to do a launch event too. I don't know oh, cool. exactly how that's going to work out. Probably with my new, uh, uh, I don't know if it's Twitter or YouTube or what it is that uh, J Penn works with me on. Oh wait, is that the Instagram that I've seen? That's a, yeah. it's a yeah. different it's name. A it's it? Yeah, it's Instagram. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got some stuff coming up for that. We're going to do a launch on of the campaign on there. Oh, that's I don't cool. Know what that yet, but some cool oh, stuff. Here's a, here's a good question for you. Artist, you yourself fanboyed over when you met him. I'm going to say no one. <laughs> yeah. Joe Hubert? Nope. Jose Delbo? No. Nope. <laughs> you never met John Buscema, right? I did not. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is obvious, Michael. Duh. As soon as I walked into his class. <laughs> as soon as I walked into his class, besides, he said... That young man cuts a fine jib. Once he saw my art, he goes, and he draws like an MFer. <laughs> with a little of my spark goes with a little of my spit shine and polish, he will draw like an MFer. <laughs> you never no. met Kirby either, right? I think people are people. Yes. Yeah. You never uh, met Kirby, right? 
No. Yeah, I didn't think so. I did not think so. Uh, Brian Blevins is saying, I love Bart Sears, but I'm not not saying it. Your Exo Man of War work changed my life. I will own some original art one day. Oh, yes. I, well, he has an Exo cover he's selling. Yes, you can look Ooh. at it right now. So if you want to buy a cover of Exo, he's got one for sale. Well, that's fortuitous. It's super fortuitous. Look at your big words. I know, and you can't even pronounce it. <laughs> it's super fortuitous. There you go. I'll show it. For sale, Exo Man of War. Uh, it was a Borderlands very Baron. Yep. It was a very cover for yep. Borderlands. So there you go. So Brian, if you want, uh, that is for sale. So there you go. That's super sweet. Okay, let's let's end with NF, let's let's end with NFL predictions. I know you're just going to say, "Oh God, it's going to be the Bucks going to the Super Bowl again." Uh, well, I'm not going to say that, but yeah, they will. What do you think? <laughs> let's go with this then. Let's go with this thing because we know it's not going to be a perfect season. What would you predict now? Not even knowing who they're playing because that doesn't come out till the 12th. Their, their season will end up looking like record. Well, 17 games this season, right? Uh, I think. They start the season? Should be. Should I be. think so. I think so. I, I think they will be 12 and 5. Ooh. Wow. What's the pack going at this year, Dennis? <laughs> <sighs> and, and Dennis, wow. here, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. You can even go with two options. The, the with the Rogers with and the without, without Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna go 10 wins with Rogers. And I, I'm I'm gonna go nine wins without Rogers. Oh my god. I wow. Would Holy crap. I and I, I'm going to say, I think Rogers <laughs> retires out of spite. And I think Jordan Love gets it, and he's our diamond in the rough, and we never look back. Yeah, there you go, Bart. Prediction. Does Rogers retire, or does he keep playing? Oh, he goes to Denver. Oh, you're calling Denver, huh? Yeah. He's not going to give up yet. He's, it's he's the, it's the only place they'll trade him. Full time. He still has fun going out there. Yeah. Discount double check. Yep. Discount he's double miss check. That. He's still good enough to, to play. He knows it. Oh, he is. He is, and nobody's saying he's not. He just wants everything on his own terms, irregardless, which isn't a real word, of what his contract says. Well, now I'll predict Dallas because I know you guys are dying to know my prediction. Well, they will, they, you can just they use will. one hand. They will win the NFC East with five wins, <laughs> nine wins. That's how bad the NFC is going to be. Nine and they'll, win, they'll, they'll win the East with nine wins. Do you know what? I think the Giants are going to have something to say about that. Not to mention the Washington. We really don't have a football name team. Yeah, Bart, I don't know if you saw that, but I saw a story about a week or so ago that they might just leave that name for the Washington as the football the team. The Washington football team. That because is they, lame. Yeah. They, well, they, the article, the headline, I didn't even read the article. The headline pretty much just said that everybody's kind of used to it now. Because nobody's like, used to the Redskins or nobody's used to the Giants. I mean, so never any. Anyhow. It's, it's, it's been a year. Trust me, get a good name, and they'll be used to that 10 years from now. Yes. Actually, they'll be used to it halfway through the season. So Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so look at that. Boxing. Marth Free is a boxing and MA fan, MMA fan, and I bet they would have more wins than the Cowboys. <laughs> oh. No fair. Oh, that's a big one. That is just – you know, when the Cowboys take the East and then storm through, since we're all in the NFC, and then storm through the playoffs and make your teams look like little bitches, you'll be going, damn it. He was right. I am ready for that. When I turn 75, I'll be waiting for that day. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> who won the playoff? Who won our playoff CBS pool last year? That that's got the nothing Dallas to do Cowboys? with the Cowboys. The Dallas what? Cowboys? No, no, I don't. No. no. Too bad you you don't play for Dallas then. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know I'm too old now. <laughs> now I could. I I could have in my prime. In my prime, I could have. If I didn't want to sling a pencil, I could have been out there passing it down the field. The prime's down the road. No, my prime's. <laughs> oh. Well, I only need one hand. Sometimes right. two. Yep. Sometimes yep. I need two. For wind? Well, not for wind. <laughs> oh. That's so sad. Ouch. So Ow. sad. What else you want to plug, Bart? Anything else? Uh. Not that I can think of right now, but I really have to go to the bathroom too. So, so nope. <laughs> in my mind. We're, that is a good way to end the show. We're all good. We, uh, we want to thank you for joining us, of course. Oh, and, for uh, this, this you know, nice. that's that's awesome. Thanks. I, I do really appreciate it. Um, my pleasure. And, and uh, we'll see you guys on Friday. There's not going to be a show Wednesday because it's my daughter's 18th birthday. So, we're not doing a show. Party. That's right. Yeah. Turns 18. And so we'll be back on Friday at four o'clock to drink a beer and talk comics and whatever else. Well, so we, we'll we, 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 we got to show our, our great finds at the convention and we're going to talk a, a little TV, a little movies and, uh, but yeah, mainly comic books. Cause we big haul, big haul this weekend. That's right. So we'll see everybody on Friday at four o'clock. So everyone have a great night. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, Bye guys. everybody. Bye.